just a couple of minutes for questions, but once again, we have a lunch break after this, so we really do encourage you to seek out uh, people to ask them. Yes? I know this is a nosy question, but could you give us an idea of the overall budget for the teaching fellows <laughs> program? When we look at this, I get very jealous. <laughs> it's a it's a modest budget. I think we're somewhere like around forty thousand dollars. Forty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So we. I mean. So that's making I mean, forty thousand is not much, as you no, know, right? Not. And so we've been talking about course remissions and then all of the other costs. And so the idea is here. I mean, these are just dedicated faculty. I mean, they really want to do this to to make the, a better teaching and learning environment. I would add to that that the general education revision, the excitement that has been generated around that has also made individual faculty members sort of thinking about how can I change my teaching, how can I make this. And you'll know, you, I'm sure you notice a lot of this is focused in the first year or, or second year, and, and that's part of it. Yes? I, I'm curious about um, how you're using this and how this affected it. sounds like the FY, the, the first year experience course, is part of that general education. But how are you infusing this across general education as well? Um, I'm really curious about that because we, we're facing the same challenges. Right, so a lot of it, I mean, in the proposal process, we encourage people to think about um, um, 100 level courses, entry level courses, larger enrollments, courses where we possibly have maximal effect on a maximal number of students. And I think the majority of the faculty fellows are, are working with those particular courses. And so these are courses that we've been rethinking as far as like what purpose do they serve as part of our gen ed? Uh, are these gateway courses? Are these sort of a remix or sort of broader objectives of a, of a liberal arts institution? And so, so, it, but beyond that, it's infusing sort of all levels of the curriculum. And so, everything from you know upper level, forward level, small intimate kinds of seminars, first year seminars, um, and so we've just I think we've decided over time now is, is not to sort of curb that too much. And how are you enforcing that, or, or how are you ensuring that that's happening in all courses, other than the courses that the fellows are teaching? Oh, well, so that's the idea. We're not. And so the idea is to build capacity such that we have sort of the maximum input. So part of it is just bringing out to our colleagues through this variety of forums, hey, this is what we're doing. This works. This didn't work. Here's our wisdom on this. And it's been infectious. Uh, and so now we have people, our proposals for the second round of the fellows program, there are more of them. Um, there's more attention to our the blogosphere now. And it's it's just, it's, it's exciting. Okay. One more. So please. So how important would you say the course release is? And what advice would you give to institutions that perhaps, for one reason or another, will not give course release for this type of work? <laughs> The course release is huge. Without the course release, I don't think many of these projects could be as rich or as successful as they have been. We did have one cohort member who chose, we had the choice as, as we were applying to either take a course remission or take remuneration, right? Like the, the amount of money that would have been, right? Um, and the one person who took the money actually has said, like, it was a struggle. Like, yeah, I had this financial incentive, but it was a struggle to find the time and the sort of intellectual space to really think deeply about this and implement it. So um, it, I think it's huge. I think I think the course remission is actually far more uh, important and beneficial than the carrot of dollars. Yeah. The time investment is great. I mean, yeah. Sean outlined the pro a lot of the process that goes into sort of thinking about the nitty gritty of, say, an assignment. Mm -hmm. uh, thinking about the rubric of it, thinking about sort of how do I treat it, what am I trying to do, sitting down in sort of one on one meetings, getting past the insecurities of putting your teaching out there on the table and taking critique for it. And so, and it is iterative. There's a lot of talk, Joe spoke about sort of this iterative design element to it. And, that's just time, 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 and so you know it's not just you know the your own individual prep time, but the meeting time on top of that, and the presentation time. So that course remission is huge. I would say it's also important in just giving us. I think a lot of the participants are assistant professors or early starting professors, and they're taking a lot of risks. And having that course remission, um, obviously, it's useful in, in terms of time, but. Also in speaking to our department chairs about like, okay, institutionally this is supported. And, and I think you know, that made us feel a lot more relaxed about what we are trying to do and showing, sharing with our department who might not get it that this is something that's supported from the top down hierarchically. Can I just add this to that? Because I think that's such an important part. You know, the model, I'll try to express this at the onset of the, the talk that I gave. 
so much of our work is situated with what we have to work with. And you know, we're working in an instance where we don't have that type of support departmentally or institutionally. You know, we want good teaching, but we aren't investing in the same way. You know, we're putting so much into scholarship right now that a lot of, I think, process, I would kill to be creating more of an ecosystem approach to these things. Um, but I'm also working in a setting where there isn't precedent, there, there aren't these advantages and affordances. And so I think it's really interesting to think about, it's got me thinking about, all right, how do I step back and work from the place that I value, but also meet what the faculty want in an institution that needs to take a couple of steps toward where you are. And there's so many different layers of questions that go into that. It would be nice to have them full afternoon just to talk about that. <laughs> well, speaking of a full afternoon, <laughs> um, Unfortunately, we are a little over time at this point, but once again, we do have a lunch break scheduled now, so I really do encourage you to seek one and out, another out to continue these discussions. And I thank all of our presenters for that. They were really